Hi guys, welcome to my labor and delivery story. Okay, so um, a little backstory. Uh, my first child, Mackenzie, was a C-section delivery. Um, it was not an emergency C-section. I had just been in labor for so long that they thought that I should um, get a C-section, which I found out later it was not medically necessary, but if you want a video on that whole shebang, uh, let me know. So I had a C-section with my first child. So. Um, when I found out I was pregnant, I knew I wanted to try for a vaginal uh, delivery. So it was what they call a VBAC, a vaginal uh, vaginal birth after cesarean section. Um, it was kind of difficult to find a physician or an OB or even a midwife down where I'm located that would support uh, a VBAC. And what I mean by support is not only say that they're feedback friendly, but they will really support me doing it. Um, before my, uh, before I found the midwifery that I found that uh, delivered Ami, I went to another place, another midwifery closer to where I'm located. And the first thing that the um, midwife said to me is, if you don't go into labor a week after, you're getting a C-section. So I immediately, well, I didn't immediately switch. It was a couple other things that I that made me really see that they were not truly VBAC friendly and went and support me um, with it. But, so, Ami was uh, due December, her, she had two different due dates, December 14th and December 18th. And the reason why she had two different due dates is because the month before I conceived her, I had a, a miscarriage. So, I never had a cycle in between the two pregnancies. So they couldn't really tell exactly when she would be due, but they guesstimated around the 14th, December 14th through the 18th. Um, so I was prayerful, I was praying that it was closer to the 14th. But per usual, my first child was two weeks overdue and this little one was overdue as well. She was only a week overdue though. So come December 20, Fifth, Christmas Day. You know, I'm walking around, I'm walking up hills and everything, just trying to set off labor, just trying to get something. Like the two weeks prior to me actually going into labor, I was having prodromal labor. So I was having contractions that actually hurt, but they were not um they were not progressing me as far as dilation. Now the week before Christmas, I went in to see my midwife and she checked me and she said I was one centimeter. And she asked me did I want to do the uh, membrane sweep. And at that point it was just like, okay, I was two weeks overdue with my last child. I'm probably gonna be two weeks overdue with this child. Um, I'm only one centimeter, so why not? So we did the, the membrane sweep. And when we did the membrane sweep, she told me that that should have got me to at least two and a half, three centimeters. And that I would have my next appointment the next Wednesday, the 26th, after Christmas, I mean, after the day after Christmas. Um, and if I hadn't go gone into labor by then, we would have to talk about possibly um, induction because she didn't want me to go too far along since I was attempting a VBAC. So. Um, the 26th comes, I mean the 25th, 10 o'clock at night, we had family down, um, that whole week, um, and, cause we were anticipating her coming, so we had family down and everything, and they actually left the night of the 25th, and we prayed, and it was so crazy, because during the prayer, they left around, I'm gonna say like 9, 30, 10 o'clock, um, they left around then, and before they left, we all got together and prayed. And one of the main prayer points was that God would send me into labor and that it'll be a quick delivery. It won't be as long as it was with Mackenzie and everything like that. So they left it, I'm going to say around 930. I literally went to bed as soon as they left. Like as soon as they left, I went into our room and I went to sleep. And at 1030, I started, I woke up because I felt a contraction. 
But at that time, I didn't take it serious because again, like I said, the, pet, the two weeks prior to that, I was having contractions. But one thing that made me think something different was that I went back to sleep, but I, I found myself waking up more often because of the contractions than I had before. And so I was like, let me let me see if these are like having some type of pattern or anything like that and so i go i try to go back to sleep bam here go another one and they were coming and they were coming and at that point i didn't have my phone so i couldn't time them but i could tell that they were continuously coming it wasn't like before where they would come for like 30 minutes and then leave so my husband he stays up like all times of the night so he was in our loft and i was like sorry like i think this may be it by this time it's like i'm gonna say 11 30. so he was like are you sure i was like yeah but i was like let me jump in the shower because they told us that if it's not real labor then when i jump in the shower that um it should stop them or cause them to like cause them to stop so i get in the shower guys <laughs> when i say they like went to a whole nother level like they actually started coming quicker when i got in the shower so i'm calling my husband i'm like no this is real like this is real like they're getting worse and then he started timing them while i was in the shower and they were only like five four to five minutes apart and so at this point i'm getting kind of nervous because i live about 45 minutes 30 35 to 45 minutes away from the hospital i was delivering at so we called my midwife unfortunately she did not get back up with us so um we decided to go ahead to the hospital because they were coming so they were coming so quick so we left to go to the hospital i'm gonna say around 1 30 2 o'clock in the morning we get to the hospital like we already had our bags packed of course already i mean yeah we had our bags packed so had Thankfully, my grandmother flew in on the 25th, so she was able to stay over with um, Mackenzie. So, we drive down to um, Atlanta, and, oh, Jesus, by the time we get there, they're like three to four minutes apart. Like, he's timing them as he's driving, and he's like, okay, babe, another one is coming, another one is coming, and lo and behold, another one came. So, we get to the hospital drive to the front of the hospital forget that the emergency entrance is closed so now we have to drive to the back of the hospital so that i can get in there and by then they're like they're getting more intense more intense and so they finally tried to get up with my midwife again they still could not get in with her so they were just like look we have your information we'll send you to triage we get in triage they take my vitals and they say that i'm i was at four and a half centimeters yeah, four and a half centimeters when she checked when the uh, nurse in the triage checked me and she was like, um, because they technically weren't supposed to do anything until they had got the okay from my midwife, but she was like, You are obviously in labor. And so if you look at my um labor and delivery vlog, like the first part of that vlog is when I'm in the tri when I'm in the triage room. So I'm in the, I stay in the triage room for about two hours to about two, two and a half hours. And they finally are able to get up with my midwife. And my midwife, well, what she had told me was that she stayed 15 minutes from the hospital, which is one of the reasons why I was so excited that she would be my midwife or she was the on-call midwife. Um, and so they were like, they talked to her, she'll be there 15 minutes because they could not get me into a room because I was supposed to have a water, a water delivery. Um, they could not get me into the room until she got there and signed off on it to make sure for sure that I was in labor. So we're waiting, we're waiting. Another hour goes by. She's still not there. And so she called, I, I guess, and she, I had never talked to her. I, she calls them and tells them, okay, go ahead and put her in a room. So um, I get into a room, I'm going to say around maybe 7 o'clock maybe seven o'clock that morning and by then guys like my contractions are still i'm gonna say about three to four minutes apart they're getting extremely extremely intense and to be honest by this point mentally i'm starting to get discouraged that i'm gonna be able to do this v-back because i have still not seen, seen my midwife my doula had gotten there 
Um, but I had still not seen my midwife and I knew that I wouldn't be able to get into the water. I wouldn't be able to do anything until she got there. And so, um, I was like, okay, well, can I at least get in the shower? Can I do something? Cause I'm like, I'm needing some pain relief at this point. I'm like the whole point purpose of me trying to, you know, do this natural is because I was excited truly about the water part of it. So they're like, okay, you can get in the shower. So my doula and my husband, they helped me get to the shower. Lo and behold, the shower head, like, it, it's not like a typical shower head where it starts high and it rains down. It kind of starts around like your chest area and then goes down. So it was just like, this is not helping. Actually, this is making it worse and it's making me annoyed. So now I'm having these painful contractions. I'm annoyed and I'm in this water and this water is not like helping. The shower, it barely like sprayed. And it was just like, they had got me like a little chair to sit in the shower, but it just was not it was just not working at that point and i had still not seen my midwife and so at this point i'm like when i got in the shower i think mentally i became i began to get defeated because it was like i've not seen my midwife nor have i talked to her they can't do the pool like they first have to get the pool down here blow the pool up fill the pool up like it's gonna take forever for them to even get to that phase and so um i'm like i don't think i can do this because like I just got, honestly, I just got really emotionally defeated because I hadn't seen my midwife and I hadn't heard from her and she was supposed to have been there almost four, four and a half hours ago. Um, so I tell uh, my doula and my husband, like while I'm in the shower, I'm like, this is not working. I want an epidural. Like I want an epidural now, like, because I was just like, this is not, this is not going to work. Like I'm so, I'm in the, and emotionally, I'm already upset that she's not there and I just feel like, yeah, I was I was just upset. Plus in pain. <laughs> so I get out of the shower and um my midwife and my husband, I mean my doula and my husband are like, Tier, you can do this. You're doing such a great job. You say you want to do this natural, you can do it. And I'm just like at this point I'm blown like like <laughs> And so you can tell at that point like they were still because the nurse had come in the room at that point and they were still kind of like trying to persuade me not to get one so she was like well let me check you finally no no not even at this point my midwife is still not there the nurse checks me and she's like okay you're at seven centimeters and to be honest y'all even when she said i was if she said i was like at eight i think i probably mentally could have pushed myself but when she said seven and i had been in labor all that time it was just like this is going to take forever so she was like um well again the whole epidural thing can't give you the epidural till your midwife gets here anyway but i can go ahead and call him for it but it's going to probably take another 45 minutes and so you know y'all by then i'm completely blown i'm like Y'all, I'm in all this pain. Y'all, like, I'm not getting the type. Like, y'all, I do not have the pool. I do not have the water. I do not have anything I'm supposed to have for this pain relief. My midwife is still not here. And I'm, I'm like, completely blown. Because it just, the experience of the nurses, that it just wasn't pleasant for me. And um, you telling me I got to wait another 45 minutes to even get an epidural. Which I felt so I was so upset like in the midst of all this I'm upset but then I'm still having to prepare myself for these contractions that are coming. So then um, she was like well your midwife said that now all of this time midwife is still not there. Your midwife said that we can give you like the sleeping thing the sleeping pill since it's going to take so long for the epidural. So I'm like okay at this point whatever give me whatever. So they gave it to me and it did put me to sleep. Not that I couldn't feel the contractions but um it did put me to sleep so i wake up maybe 20 30 minutes later and um the uh, anesthesiologist is there with a student and so he and so i'm like they were like are you sure you still want it because and i know it, probably at that time y'all yeah, probably was around eight centimeters by then but i was just like so emotionally defeated at that point because i just was completely blown i still had not seen my midwife <laughs> And that's what they promised me would not happen. But uh, I was just like, no, I want, I want the epidural. Like at this point, I know I'm trying for a V back, and I know that 
trying for a be back can sometimes uh be dangerous and i'm stressing out and i just cannot focus at this point and so they give me the epidural and the epidural like it, it hits it hits well and so it doesn't necessarily take all the pain away but it takes most of the pain away to the point where i can lay down and i can sleep an hour later my midwife finally appears now remember guys i called her at two o'clock a.m two o'clock in the morning she did not get there until eight o'clock that morning so it's almost six seven hours no i called her before two that's when i got to the hospital i called her around 12. so yes yeah, about eight nine hours after i called her and she was supposed to show up to the um hospital she just walks in which i'm sorry y'all it peed me off because i'm just like you're not gonna apologize you're not gonna say you know i'm sorry da, da, da. but then she has this i mean like why like i like why did you get the epidural and i'm just like looking at her like yeah. don't you don't even want to go there ma'am you do not want to go there with me um yeah. she checks me at that point and i am eight i'm eight centimeters and so after that they give me pitocin because my contractions are starting to become like a little faint so they're not progressing they're not getting they weren't strong enough to progress me i'm sorry guys <laughs> okay i mean yes i mean yeah um and then uh so after they give me the pitocin well, of course, my, my contractions, as you know, when you do get an epidural, it does slow your contractions down. So, that's what happened to me. It slowed them down. And, um, so they had to give me Pitocin to, like, bring them back, bring them back up. So, it was taking me forever to progress those two centimeters. Forever. To the point where I was almost scared because it gave me flashbacks of what happened with my first child. I'm like, man, I'm gonna have to have a C-section because, um... It's taking me so long to progress. They had bro uh, broke my water. It was, they probably broke my water around 6.30. And they noticed, 6.30 in the afternoon, y'all. So by this whole time, I had I was progressing like little by little by little by little. Six o'clock comes, they break my water, and it's poop. So apparently she had pooped in, in the womb. And um, so, okay, let me back up three about three o'clock afternoon in the af uh, in the afternoon um i start feeling the contractions on the left side of my body completely completely so the epidural would not take like my my right side was completely numb but my left side was i was feeling every contraction that would come in there and guys they had up the pitocin by then so they were extremely intense then and so i was trying to tell my um my nurse at that time because they had switched shifts i'm telling her like i'm feeling these contractions like i don't even have to look at the screen to tell you that a contraction is coming i'm telling you i feel these contractions and she's trying to convince me that what i'm feeling is the pressure of the baby possibly crowning or or descending and i'm trying to let her know that that is not what i'm feeling like i'm not feeling pressure i'm feeling pain i am feeling the contraction i'm feeling when it goes it rises it peaks and it comes down and i'm trying to tell her that but she would not like she would not listen to me and it made me guys it made me so upset because i'm like this is one of the primary reasons why a lot of african american women die during labor because they're not being listened to so i'm trying to tell her like I can feel it and she's still like it's this is going on for about an hour and a half y'all me trying to convince her that the, the epidural didn't take on the left side so then she finally calls the uh the anesthesiologist he comes back in he gives me some more medicine y'all again I it is it is not taking it all on the left side it is the only thing that it is doing is numbing my right side so now let's get on to six o'clock. So that, that started around two o'clock when I couldn't feel anything. So it's been about four hours and I am completely feeling the contractions on my left side, which means like it's the worst because I just would have rather not got the epidural if I knew that was going to happen because I can't get up. I can't do anything because my right side is completely numb. So I'm just sitting in the bed trying to get through the contractions and trying to get through the contractions. But then I got an attitude, y'all. <laughs> because I'm like, what's going on? Like they turned me over and everything to try to kind of like push the medicine to the other side. Still not working. So then um 
the anesthesiologist comes in again around 5 30 before they break my water she, he comes in again and he's like he gives me more medicine i'm like i i propose to him i'm like well, maybe it's not the amount of medicine you're putting in. Maybe the, the needle, I don't, I don't know nothing to, like how the needles work, but maybe the needle ain't going to the ceiling, it's just going to one side. Maybe it's the way it's actually put in that's not allowing for it to go on that side. And he was like, let me try, let me see if that's, let me see if that's what it is. I'm just like, dude, why did I have to propose that to you? But anyway, so this is 5.30. He leaves and says, I'll be right back. You, I'll be right back. Midwife comes in at six, breaks my water, realizes that she's pooped, and I'm at eight. And I'm like almost at nine centimeters at that point. At six o'clock, seven seven fifteen comes. The anesthesiologist comes back at seven fifteen, mm. almost two hours later. Mm. Comes back in at the same time my midwife comes back in to check me. So she was like. Cause he was about to try to re-administer it. And she was like, well, let me check you first. And she checked me and I was like at nine and a half centimeters. And she was like, okay, well, would you rather get an epidural, get a re-administer epidural, or would you rather push this baby out? I said, baby, let's push, push. Shoot, I said, let's push, honey. So at seven, um, 15, we start pushing. Another thing that I forgot to mention is something happened with my doula very early in the day, I'm gonna say around two o'clock that afternoon, something happened with, she had a family emergency, so she actually had to leave. Um, and so she told me that she was sent her the emergency doula. So the emergency doula came in exactly when it was time for me to push. So at first, uh, you know, they cocked my legs up. Again, I'm still completely feeling the left side. I'm not feeling my right side at all. So they having to like throw my right leg up. And she was like, okay, well, you, when you just tell me, you know, when you feel the contraction come, just push. So I started pushing. And yeah, I was pushing you out, my mom. And the first few pushes were really good. I guess when she asked me to push, it pushed me to a 10 centimeters. And she was like, all right, we're ready to go. Let's get this baby out. So we, I pushed for about 45 minutes. And I really don't even think it would have taken me that long to get her out, but we tried different ways of pushing. So the first push, first 15 minutes were like me with my knees up, like my legs up pushing, and that was really effective. But for some reason, my midwife wanted me to try another way with the, I can't remember the name of the, the like sling that she used like during labor and delivery. She used that and she asked me to like hold it and push and pull on it while pushing. And we did that for about 20 minutes, but it was not effective, which may have caused a lot of the tearing that I had. Um, and then she was like, you know what, let's try the other way. So we went back to the first way. Bam, she was like, oh yeah, this is this is the right way. You, you're doing good with this one. So within 40 minutes, bloop, Ami was here. So she was born uh, December 26th at 7:55, and when she came out like i felt because again i'm feeling everything on my left side like i felt her come out like i i still had the experience of yeah i still had the experience of like crowning and that sensation and everything nothing was known yeah and so she came out and they put her on my chest immediately and um and yeah, like I knew she was heavier than than Mackenzie. It was crazy because immediately when they put her on my chest, I was like, okay, this baby is heavier. And she was eight pounds um, four ounces, and her sister was seven pounds nine ounces. Yeah, but but Ami, Ami, hey Ami, hey Mama, hey Ami. So yes, yeah, she came, and I'm so grateful that she came here. So I was. Um, able to have a successful V back and I'm so 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 grateful for that even with all the little hiccups and everything I'm glad that I was able to experience a, um, a vaginal birth even though I didn't have the whole water birth and things like like I wanted to have like the fact that she was there and she was safe I was safe um, I was grateful for her, so that is the end of my labor and delivery story um after she came out she did have to go to the NICU for like four days because she swallowed meconium so if you guys want a video about my NICU experience with her like comment in the comment box um but 
<laughs> little Abby is here. Oh. This is my little mic. Oh. Yes. Yes, I mean. Oh. <laughs> she loves to talk. So thank you for watching this video. Make sure that you like this video, share it, and guys, subscribe. Hit that little red button at the bottom with the triangle and share this video with some ladies that may be attempting a V-back. And I just want to say that, guys, if you do want a V-back, it's possible. I know you can get discouraged, especially I was one week overdue with her. Um, and so I was like, man, I'm not going to be able to do this. But guys, it is possible. Make sure you have somebody that supports you as far as your midwife. Um, and, and you can do it. You can do it. Just set your mind to it. Um, so I will talk to you guys later and I'll see you on another day. Bye.